Nothing has changed the field of photography more than phone cameras. It used to be very rare for an ordinary person to take pictures and do so without worrying about the cost of film. But now, the process of taking pictures has become a lot more democratized, making it, as a creative process, that much more accessible. But have our photos actually gotten better? Or has our ability to take a quick snapshot of scenes, whether we're hiking on a trail or walking along the beach on vacation, prevented us from making decent photos? Almost all the landscapes, nature, architecture, urban photos we capture seem to be just meh, and we rarely ever go back to them. They just sit in our phone, clouding up our storage, eventually to be deleted. Is it because we don't have a professional camera with those fancy lenses which cost even more than our phones? Or can we actually create beautiful and meaningful landscape images even with the limitations of phone cameras? But before we actually do that, I think we first have to talk about what it is that makes phone cameras bad, or at least what we think as bad, and then what we can do to take those disadvantages and turn them into something more meaningful for us. One of the biggest difference between phone cameras and normal fully sized cameras is their sensor sizes. Usually a phone camera will have a much tinier sensor than the normal camera. And this plays the biggest part in determining the quality of the photo because the size of the sensor, it will determine how much light can actually be pulled in to the photo. That will determine your signal to noise ratio. I like to think of signal to noise ratio in this way. All sensors will generate some sort of noise due to the electrical fluctuations in them. But the more light that you can actually bring in to the sensor, the more that light will overpower the noise fluctuation. So the gap between the noise and the light that's coming in will increase. For bigger sensors and for smaller sensors like we have in our phones, the gap will be much smaller, which means that the noise might sometimes become very apparent in the actual image. And what this means is the capability of our phone cameras is already much less than other cameras because of this. A phone camera just doesn't have the real estate to put big sensors in it to capture more light. You've probably experienced this when trying to take photos at night because the phone cameras have that much lower capacity to capture the light during darkness. Another big disadvantage that phone cameras have is their limited focal lengths. A lot of cameras, like this one right here, have interchangeable lens, which means you can take it off and replace it with other lenses. And some of those lens have the ability to zoom in as well. Whereas for phone cameras, we usually only have one or two lenses. Some phones even have multiple lenses, but those lenses are also fixed focal lengths, which means you really have to be a lot more creative with your photos. If, for example, you don't have a phone which has a lens that has a long focal length, you won't be able to capture details far away. You'll be tied to basically what we normally see in our phone cameras, which is a 16 to 24 millimeter focal length. We can't really put a zoom lens because that requires a lot more hardware than our phones which we really don't want to appear bulky. So those hardware challenges relate to a bigger problem in our phone, which is the limitation of the dynamic range that we can capture. Dynamic range is the range of light from your dark shadows to your bright lights that a phone has the capability of capturing in a single shot. Our eyes have a much larger dynamic range than even the more expensive cameras, and then even more so than the phone cameras. When you take a photo which has both dark spots and very bright spots like a sun, then you are going to end up with images that are very either bright or very dark, depending on what your phone has used to set its exposure. That's why you often see pictures that just don't look appealing because what you see in real life differ from what the camera captured. And so what you see in real life is this beautiful imagery before you with, with both details in the shadows as well as details in the sky. But when you use your phone camera, what you end up with is a white sky and really dark contrasting ground. Taking into account these disadvantages, I'm going to go over tips that you can use to create gorgeous landscape photos with the limitations of your phone camera that highlight the advantages that you have with this. Number one is shooting with intentionality. And we've gotten so used to taking photos with our phones that usually when we see something beautiful out there in nature, we're very quick to take a snapshot of it. And that's great for documenting things, but if we truly want to remember something, it's important that we do it with intentionality. So rather than just taking a snapshot, take the time to be a little bit more present in the moment to acknowledge the fact that you are actually taking a photo, that you find something beautiful out there in nature, 
And when you do that, it allows you to embed your emotions a lot more clearly within the photo. For that next time when you go back and take a look at that photo, you're able to recall that moment much more vividly. You're able to remember the emotions that you felt in that image. So once you have the intentionality to take a photo with your smartphone, then you're ready for the next step, which is focusing primarily on composition. Composition decides how all the different elements within your photo are placed. It also decides how aesthetically pleasing your photo is. So start with something simple like the rule of thirds. I actually made a video of that and I'll link to it somewhere above where you can take the rule of thirds and elevate that into something better. And then move on to things like leading lines or patterns, etc. What this will allow you to do is make it so your photo is aesthetically pleasing when you take it because what you're really doing when you're taking a photo is taking a beautiful scene and then compressing it down to your smartphone, right? And when we do that, we lose a lot of the beauty that we felt when we first saw the scene. Composition will allow you to capture that beauty and then be able to recreate it when you are viewing the photo or when someone else is viewing the photo. Number three, be aware of everything in your photo. When we're looking with our eyes, we tend to ignore a lot of the different details that will creep up within our photos. So when you take out your phone and try and take a picture, you're likely to include a lot of different things in that photo that didn't actually make the scene any more beautiful. For example, when you're taking a picture of a sunset, you'll likely get a bunch of shrubs or trees in the foreground and you won't even realize it when you're looking at it because your eyes are drawn more towards the sun and that's the beauty that you're kind of enamored by. But your eyes will naturally not think about the houses or anything else that is kind of distracting, but the phone will remember it, your screen will remember it. Take the time to think about all the different things within your screen so that, for example, if, if there are things on the edge, you can either remove them or try and bake that in to your composition as well. Number four, use the wide angle camera on your smartphone. A lot of smartphones are built with wider angle views than we normally see with our eyes. And what this allows you to do is actually distort parts of the image depending on how you angle your phone. So getting close to an element will make it so that that element appears larger than you normally would see it in your eye. And this can be used creatively to kind of grab the viewer's attention to emphasize certain parts of the photo and de-emphasize others. Using that, you'll be able to create much more dramatic foreground elements and guide the viewer into the photo. And building right on top of that is number five, which is to turn your phone upside down. This will allow you to get even closer to the ground and create even more dramatic foreground elements. It will also allow you to be a lot more creative because usually phones allow us to be a lot more versatile with where we position them rather than people who have bigger cameras. Number six, expose for the highlights. When you have something very bright in your image, usually the sun for nature photography, you want to lower the exposure, which is that little slider on the phone camera screen, such that you can start to see a lot more detail in things like the sky or in those bright portions of the screen. We would want to do this because of the dynamic range issue that we talked about earlier. And it's a lot easier to reclaim some of the detail lost in the darker parts of the screen rather than the brighter parts of the screen. So try and lower the exposure if you are trying to include something very bright in your scene. Number seven, prioritize shooting in amazing light. Your camera already has limitations because of the dynamic range issues we've talked about. And usually a lot of people are out there taking photos during the daylight hours. During the daylight, there is a lot of sun. It is a very sharp, it's very harsh. So try and take photos during sunrise or sunset. During those times, you'll have a lot more soft light and the hues created by the sunrise or sunset will allow you to create more beautiful images than when you try and take photos of the same natural scene during daylight hours. But if you are taking photos during the midday when the light is really harsh, Try using that high contrast to your advantage. Phones will tend to create very high contrast images, but if you can find interesting shadows created by that harsh light, that can be used creatively to make gorgeous images. I tend to use that a lot more when I'm in the cities, because I really like to play with the harsh shadows that come into play with buildings. Number nine, stabilize for best performance. Although phones are built with the ability to take photos while using handheld, they do that by increasing the noise a lot more and reducing the quality of the photo a lot more. So by stabilizing the phone, by putting it on something or putting it against something, you're able to create much more high quality shots with your phone. Number 10, learn to edit your photos quickly on your smartphone. And by this, I don't mean slapping on a filter. 
A lot of camera apps built into your phone come with the ability to edit your photos as well. So play around with those sliders and see what works. Even the smallest change can make a big impact on your photo. And then finally, when you're ready to take your photography to the next level, download a camera app that allows you to change things like shutter and ISO manually. Built-in camera apps will tend to choose those settings for you, and when they can't do that well enough, they'll add a lot of digital magic to it. So you'll end up with a photo which appears very digitally enhanced. When you take over the control and adjust the manual settings, you'll be able to compensate for the limitations that the phone already has and do so in a way which matches your vision for the photo. These tips aren't set in stone and can be adjusted as you see fit, but they set a good base for your smartphone landscape photography. Remember, the phone camera is a very powerful tool and don't let it being not as good as other cameras stand in the way of you creating something beautiful. All right, hope to see you next time.